Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the AEW Dynamite Review. And this is AEW's second week on TNT. And tonight's AEW was from the Agonis, the Agonis Arena, I think that's how you pronounce it. I may be pronouncing it wrong, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. And... I thought tonight's AEW show, I thought it was a good show. I was very entertained. It was a very enjoyable show. Wasn't perfect by any means, though, but it was a good, entertaining uh, show. And, you know, AEW, it's only its second weekend. It's, you know, delivering. It's keeping up the pace. I thought uh, the show, uh, the pace of the show for the two hours, you know, were done, you know, really uh, well, and it made me get the bad taste out of my mouth uh, from uh, what what I watched on Monday Night Raw on Monday. So, but anyways, let's get on with the AEW review, the AEW Dynamite review. Uh, we had uh, pretty uh, good matches tonight. Uh, one match was decent. AW Dynamite tonight kicked off with uh, the first match. Uh, it was uh, a tournament, uh, the first round match uh, in the AW World Tag Team Championship Tournament. You know, they're going to crown uh, a tag team who will be uh, the first ever AW World Tag Team Champion. You know, it's going to be in the, uh, the semifinals. So tonight, uh, the tournament kicked off. Uh, it was Private Party, Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Wen versus the Young Bucks. Of course, Matt and Nick Jackson. And this match was, in my opinion, the best match of the night. This was a really good match, a very entertaining uh, match. Uh, Private Party, uh, they were from uh, House of Glory. I've been to a uh, few House of Glory shows. Uh, I think the last time I went was... Back in like 2014, I think uh, last last time I went, uh, Mick Foley uh, was doing a meet and greet there. So, but been to a few House of Glory shows, and they're really uh, they're really awesome. Uh, they're they're a wrestling uh, promotion here in uh, New York. Uh, their shows are always done in Queens. So, but private party, uh, seeing them in this match. Uh, they were entertaining. I really enjoyed uh, what they bought uh, in this match. Of course, the Young Bucks, Matt and uh, Nick, they were entertaining as well. I like them, you know, with the whole being the elite, uh, you know, that they do. And it was just back and forth between uh, them. Uh, both uh, teams delivered here. And it just had a, uh, a good pace to the match. This is how tag team wrestling should be. You know, WWE needs to take notes because this is how you do tag team wrestling. So, but uh, you had a point in the match where uh, where it was uh, Matt Jackson, he was doing uh, the Norton Lights uh, suplex. I think he laid three of them on, uh, I think it was Mark Wen. And then you had uh, Cassidy come in and... Uh, Jackson, Matt Jackson ended up, uh, you know, grabbing him, and Jackson did a double Northern Lights suplex to both uh, members of the private party. They tried to go for the pin, they ended up kicking out of it, and the end of the match, uh, you had a uh, private party win. Uh, we had Mark Wen uh, roll up uh, Matt Jackson. So, private party win the match. They get to move on in uh, the tournament. Of course, the Young Bucks are eliminated. So, but it was a surprise to see private party uh, win this match. My picks were the Young Bucks because the Young Bucks, you know, they're a good. Uh, they're a good team. You know, Matt and uh, Nick. But as much as I would love to see to have seen them move on, I think private party. After watching them in this match tonight, they deserve 
uh, the win and to move on. But all in all, it was a good match. It was the best match of the night. It was very entertaining. A very entertaining match, and both teams delivered. And then, you know, after the match, uh, we saw a private party. They were celebrating with the crowd as uh, the show went to commercial. And you saw, like, the small box and the commercial uh, that was playing in the small box. You still saw a private party, you know, partying up with the crowd. When uh, AW came back from the commercial, they were still celebrating. And then we had uh, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho and his new stable. Uh, he heads to the ring with uh, Sammy Guevara, uh, Ortiz, Santana, and uh, Jake Hager. We saw uh, the end of AEW last week. Uh, it's this new uh, stable uh, that... It was put together, you know, with Jericho, Guevara, Ortiz, Santana, and uh, Jake Hager. So they make their way to uh, the ring. Jericho ends up getting on the mic, and he introduces himself as, uh, you know, the lead champion. And he ends up saying that the debut episode of Dynamite last week took the world by storm, and he takes all the credit for it. He ends up talking about how his group proved themselves last week, and that they're the next and now. He ends up calling his group his confidants, the closest men he's ever met, and that they're going to keep working together, and Jericho says he does have a name. Uh, for the group. Jericho introduces Sammy Guevara. He ends up calling him a sexy Spanish god and one of the greatest performers his, you know, his age in a long time. And he says that's why Guevara made his list. Then he talks about Ortiz and Santana. And he says... Uh, he personally recruited them and that they're ready to fight. They're angry and ready. Ends up saying that they're back alley brutes and that's why they made his list. Then he ends up introducing Jake Hager. And he goes on to say that he's the most terrifying, crazy MMA fighter in the world. And the crowd starts chanting, we the people. And so this is when the uh, promo got really good. This is where Jericho, right here, he buried, he buried the hell out of WWE creative. Because as the crowd was chanting, we the people, he, Jericho says, hold on, hold on. You know, we the people is dead. He ends up saying that it was a stupid idea uh, from Bad Creative and it's gone. So Jericho right here completely buried WWE Creative. Which I really I really like that. I really like that from Jericho. That's when uh, this promo got good and that is how you do an off the script promo. Right there. That was awesome. That was awesome how Jericho took a jab to WWE Creative. Because he probably knows how stale and how garbage the WWE product, you know, is now. You know, Monday Night Raw, every single week. It's been shitty. SmackDown, you know, too. They SmackDown is hit and miss. So Jericho know Jericho knows. So Jericho ends up going on and says that Hager is undefeated in MMA. Oh, and I uh, forgot to mention when uh, Jericho says, you know, it was a stupid, it was a stupid idea by Bad Creative and it's gone. And then the crowd starts uh, with the AEW chant. 
So that's when uh, Jericho goes on to say that uh, Hager is undefeated in MMA. And he goes on to say that makes Hager the toughest man in the entire pro wrestling business. And then we finally get the name of the group, of Jericho's group. He ends up calling his group the Inner Circle. Which, you know, I like I like the name even though they could did they could have gotten a better name for the group. You know, I think it's not not a bad name for all the group. I mean I thought it sounded a little cheesy at first, but I have no problem. I have no problem with the with the name. So he names his group the Inner Circle. He ends up saying that they're taking control of AW now. Jericho ended up going on to say that he doesn't care if you're the Young Bucks or Kenny Omega or Cody, which he calls that stupid son of a bitch. And he says, you know, Cody has been entitled by his famous family his entire life. Jericho ended up saying that he doesn't like Cody or the Rhodes family. Jericho ends up calling Dusty Rhodes a jerk. Oh, well, he calls the late great uh, Dusty Rhodes. Not Dustin Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes, I meant. Jericho ends up uh, calling Dusty Rhodes a jerk. The late great Dusty Rhodes. Which, you know, that's kind of, you know, disrespectful. In a, you know, because Dusty Rhodes is, you know, no longer with us. And he ends up, uh, he ends up saying that Dustin Rhodes is a moron. And that he's going to kick Dustin's ass tonight. And at full gear on November 9th. And Jericho ends up saying that he's going to beat the ever-living shit out of Cody Rhodes at full gear and that they're going to walk the streets of Baltimore and have a little bit of the bubbly and that's how uh, the, the promo segment ended but I really enjoyed this this promo from Jericho I enjoyed uh, the jab that he did uh, and the burial that Jericho did with WWE Creative, with the whole We the People, uh, with the whole We the People thing, you know, I thought that was great. I mean, that's how you do an off the script promo, so, or non script, or possibly that was non scripted. So, but it was a really good. Uh, promo really good segment from uh them the inner circle uh name i have no problem with it i like it even though they could have chosen a better name but i said i have no problem with i have no problem with that i kind of uh get a kick out of uh the name so. then we had darby allen versus jimmy havoc which this was a good match. It was uh, entertaining, and uh, it was back and forth between the both of them. Uh, when the match started, Allen uh, offered a handshake to uh, Jimmy Havoc. Havoc ended up uh, using uh, that as an excuse, and that is when uh, they went at it. That's the match got underway, and in the end. Darby Allen won the match. He ended up hitting the coffin drop to uh, to Jimmy Havoc, and he wins the match. And this match was for whoever won this match uh, will get to face Jericho next week on Dynamite for the AEW World Championship. So now that Darby Allen won, Darby Allen is now facing Chris Jericho next week for the AEW World Championship. So that's going to be a really uh, good match to uh, look forward to. I have to say, I think Jericho is still going to re still going to retain uh, the AEW World 
uh, championship. So, but that's my pick for next week. I think Jericho is not losing that title anytime soon. But overall, Darby Allen versus uh, Jimmy Havoc was a good match. Thought both guys delivered uh, here in the match. Really like how uh, you know Darby Allen uh, comes out. Uh, you know, I thought he came out really cool. Jimmy Havoc, uh, when he came out, I liked. I liked how that uh, that mask uh, that he wore that he came out with. Then we had the women's uh, tag team match: uh, Bay Presley and Amy Sakura. I think that's how you pronounce uh, her name. Versus uh, Britt Baker. Dr. Brick Baker, DMD, and Rio. Rio coming off of uh, her becoming the first ever AEW uh, Women's Champion, uh, which we saw last week. And this match itself, it was decent. Uh, wasn't a perfect match by any means. Uh, I think uh, Britt Baker and Rio uh, made a good team together. And... Towards the end of the match, at the end of the match, Britt Baker and Rio win the match. Britt Baker ended up blocking in the uh, the rings of Saturn on Amy Sakura. So Britt Baker and Rio win the match. Post match, uh, we had uh, Presley uh, attack uh, Baker, and they were just you know going at it. Referee. I uh, had to do uh, separate them, but Britt Baker, I like her. I think she's very uh, entertaining in the ring. I remember watching uh, her match at uh, All In uh, with that women's match she delivered uh, in that match. It was very entertaining, and I would like to see her get a shot at Rio for uh, the AEW Women's Championship. You know, I think I could. You know, since that, you know, coming as, uh, you know, the months progress uh, for AEW. But I really like to see that. I think that would be, that would make a really good uh, match between uh, the both of them. But Rio, I think it's ta she's talented. She's very, uh, very cool in the ring. And she... Uh, according to uh, the, co the commentary guy, she was actually wrestling, started wrestling at nine years old. You know, that's a uh, young age for uh, you know, for her to start wrestling, uh, which, you know, she's really, uh, she's really talented. And she deserved the, uh, the AEW uh, Women's Championship to become the first ever. All in all, it was a... It was an okay match. It was a decent match, decent women's match. Not great, not perfect by any means. So then we had a uh, we got a best friends, uh, you know, Vigenette. Showed them uh, hugging in a the park. Then we see uh, Jennifer Decker ends up uh, interviewing uh, the best friends. They were in the crowd for uh, the show, and she asks them, you know, how they are feeling about going against SCU next week in the uh, tournament, the first round tournament for the AEW uh, Tag Team Championships, and you know, World Tag Team Championships, and you know, Chuck says, "Don't ask us, ask." This guy. So the camera pans, and we see Orange Cassidy. He's sitting down, and he gives them, he gives the camera a thumbs up. So now is that? It looks like, looks like you know the best friends are ready for next week against SCU. Let's see how that match goes for next week. If I had to take my pick, my prediction, I would like to see, uh, you know, the best friends uh, 
win and move on. Who knows? So then after uh, the best friends get interviewed, we see the lights go out. The lights go down. And then they come back up. We see, you know, a guy sitting in a chair on the stage. He gets up and we see that it's Sean Spears. You all know Sean Spears. He was originally in WWE. He was Ty Dillinger. So he made his entrance. Uh, he was, uh, he came out from, uh, he came out accompanied by the former uh, four uh, horsemen, one half of the four uh, horsemen, uh, Telly Blanchard, who is a uh, WWE Hall of Famer uh, with the, uh, the four horsemen. So he accompanied Sean Spears, and it was Sean Spears versus John Moxley, and this was a really entertaining match. This was a good match. Uh, right as Moxley made his uh, way to the ring, the both of them just started going at it, and it was quick. It was fast paced. Uh, at the beginning of the match, they just went right at it. They just you know just started. Throw in the punches, going back and forth, and Moxley here, uh, he was uh, very good, and uh, we had John Moxley win the match. He ended up pinning the uh, the paradigm shift to Sean Spears uh, on the uh, you know in the ring. So John Moxley ended up winning the match. Then, uh, post-match, Kenny Omega ended up coming out. Omega, he was on the stage. We see him carry out a barbed wire bat and a broom that was made out of barbed wire. That was out of barbed wire. So he had a barbed wire bat and a barbed wire broom. So Moxley is on the other uh, ramp. And he was just staring at Omega. And I uh, forgot to mention, during this match, Pac was on commentary. He was commentated uh, there as the match uh, progressed and went on. So uh, Moxley was on the ramp. Omega, Kenny Omega, ends up throwing Moxley the bat. And then we see Pac. Pac comes and blindsides Omega with a chair, with a steel chair. He ends up uh, hitting the chair to the back of uh, to the back of Kenny Omega's head. Pac ends up leaving. Moxley goes over to Kenny Omega, stands over uh, Kenny Omega, and he ends up uh, you know taking the bat. Looks like oh Moxley might hit uh, Kenny Omega with the with the bat. With the barbed wire bat. So he ends up just tossing the bat down and he leaves. That's how, uh, that's what happened though. But after last week with uh, John Moxley attacking Kenny Omega, where they went uh, into the crowd and you know, we saw Moxley hit that, uh, that DDT on Omega through the, uh, the glass uh, table which I thought uh, was cool. Looks like we're going to see a match between uh, Moxley and Kenny Omega. Possibly going to happen at, uh, possibly going to happen at uh, Full Gear. So. Well, no, it was a good match between uh, Moxley and uh, Sean Spears. Then we had the main event, uh, which was... Uh, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara versus uh, Dustin Rhodes and Hangman Adam Page. Tag team match. We had a uh, we had a uh, Hager out there. Hager accompanied uh, Jericho and uh, Guevara. And match started with uh, you know Rhodes and uh, Guevara squaring up. Jericho ended up getting involved. Uh, 
Dustin ends up brawling with Jericho on the floor. Hager is uh, looking on, uh, you know, the referee. You know, Hager was looking on as, you know, the referee was struggling to, uh, you know, get order for the match. And we saw Dustin ends up uh, dumping Jericho over the barricade. And there was a point in the match where uh, Hager ended up uh, getting involved. And Hager ended up uh, taking out uh, Hangman. He runs over uh, Hangman on the outside. And at the end, Sammy Guevara is in control of the match. Sammy ends up uh, charging in. The referee is distracted. And Hager ends up coming in and blindsides uh, Dustin. So Jericho ends up uh, getting in, taking control. Jericho hits the Judas effect to Dustin Rhodes. Scores the pinfall. So there you go, Jericho and Sammy Guevara end up winning the match. So post-match, we had a three-on-one uh, assault on Dustin Rhodes. Uh, Guevara and Jericho and Hager were taking down uh, Dustin. And Hangman Page gets back up, tries to help out, tries to save Dustin. But, you know, the numbers game are there. It's too much uh, for, uh, for Hangman Page. Hager ends up sending uh, out uh, Hangman to the floor. Hangman Page ends up hitting a chair shot to uh, Hager. The two start fighting to the back. Guevara and Jericho are in the ring. They're just uh, stomping at Dustin. And the lights go out. And from right there, I'm like, oh, Cody's going to come out and save, you know, his brother. So light come back on, and of course it's Cody. So Cody ends up uh, crossroad and he delivers a crossroads to Guevara. And Cody and Jericho, they end up squaring up in the, in the ring. Santana Ortiz come and they blindside Cody. Jericho ends up holding up the uh, the AEW uh, championship, world championship. And they celebrate. Dustin ends up trying to help. But Jericho ends up going to... Jericho ends up uh, attacking Cody with the belt. And then we get uh, MJF. Maxwell Jacob Friedman. He ends up coming out with the chair. Jericho uh, then holds Cody and, you know, he's like, Jericho uh, wanted MJF to, uh, wanted MJF to uh, hit Cody with, with the chair. So, Co sorry about that, but I was saying, uh, you know, Jericho ends up holding up uh, Cody so MJF could attack uh, Cody and hit Cody with the chair. But, you know, MJF is one of Cody's friends. So MJF ends up attacking uh, the inner circle. MJF goes after Santana and Ortiz. And the crowd end up popping for MJF. You know, MJF right here really, uh, you know, liked him. Really enjoyed uh, seeing him last week on TV. The guy is, you know, popular. The guy, in my opinion, is a star. You know, I like his uh, persona uh, from what we saw last week of him as, you know, this cocky, prickish asshole heel that he plays. And here tonight, he got a big pop from the crowd. But he celebrates for a little bit in the ring. Jericho comes in, hits the code breaker on him. So then we got the Young Bucks, Matt and uh, Nick. They came out. They go after Santana and Ortiz with a double uh, kick, with a double super kick. Jericho ends up getting out of the way, gets out of the ring, gets his title. 
and you know, Cody looks on from the ring. Young Bucks and uh, Dustin, they join Cody, who was still, which they were still in the ring. Jericho ends up throwing the referee down. And we see Darby Allen. Darby Allen comes down the ramp on his skateboard, leaps off the skateboard, takes down Jericho, ends up, uh, you know, throwing punches at Jericho, ends up taking the skateboard. He hits uh, Jericho across the spine with the, uh, the skateboard. And so then Jericho gets a mic, ends up getting on it, and says, you stupid idiots don't know who you're dealing with. He tells uh, Darby Allen, next week, it's your funeral, bitch. And so that's how AEW Dynamite ended for uh, this week. But it was a really uh, good main event. Uh, with uh, with Jericho and Guevara versus uh, Dustin Rhodes and Hangman Adam Page. It was a uh, quick uh, back and forth match. Very good, very entertaining. And I like the whole thing at the end with uh, you know MJF coming out. And that big pop that he got, that he received. Darby Allen, I did not expect him to uh, you know, come out on the skateboard. <laughs> And we'll see what happens next week, you know, with Darby Allen and Jericho. Like I said earlier, I think Jericho is still going to retain the title. He's not going to lose the title that quick. But all in all, AEW Dynamite tonight, like I said, it was a good show. Very entertaining. And for its second week, it delivered. So anyways, that's it for my review of AEW Dynamite. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed the review. And uh, definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And until next video, I'll see you all later.